So let's kick it off with Rust, the armorer, the young woman, only in her like young 20s, who was responsible for firearms and ammo on set, um, was charged with involuntary manslaughter. In addition to Alec Baldwin being charged, he comes next. And in, you know, you'll tell me whether this is bad or good for Alec Baldwin, uh, but it's some sort of a sign. She was just found guilty. Here is the jury rendering its verdict in SOT 13. We find the defendant, Hannah Gutierrez, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one. We find the defendant, Hannah Gutierrez, not guilty of tampering with evidence as charged in count two. All right, thank you. You may be seated. I'm not going to lie. I feel bad for this young woman. Mm. I, she's so young. She uh, seems to have been thrown onto a set where she had very little supervision. I don't think she was ready for prime time. That's pretty clear. And um, I don't, I think she did screw up. I don't know. I mean, I don't know, you guys. Do What do you think? Is it? Well, I'll play one other thing. I'll play one other thing before I get you weigh in. Here's the prosecution making the case that, you know, even though she's young and maybe earnest, a woman died. Watch. And folks, if she's not checking the dummy ammunition during the pendency of the filming to make sure that those rounds that are designed to look like live rounds are in fact dummy rounds, this was a game of Russian roulette every time an actor had a gun with dummies. Sadly for Ms. Hutchins, her camera crew walked off set that morning and that required her to go into the church and operate the camera herself. And that's what she was doing when the live round that Ms. Gutierrez put in Mr. Baldwin's gun was expelled from that firearm and went all the way through her body. Uh, not the most compelling lawyer I've ever seen in my life, but she got it done, Jana. Was it the right result? You know, David and I were just talking a little bit off air. I'm bothered by the guilty verdict in this case, not because I don't think this was a tragedy. It absolutely was. But I felt from the start, this case really, as far as this defendant, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, really blurs the line between civil and criminal liability. And I get, look, you know, I listened to basically the entire trial. I get that it was chaotic on the set. And I get another thing that actually should have helped her. It was chaotic in the place where these dummy bullets came from. The, the, the supplier of these bullets looked like a tornado went through his warehouse. Then we Seth wonder- Kenny. Yes. And we wonder how, how somehow live rounds got on set when you can't, it was, it was a mess. And she claims that she checked them and they look a lot alike and she didn't check them good enough. And one thing led to another, and this is a horribly perfect storm that resulted in death. But is it criminal negligence, Megan, or is it just plain old negligence given the totality? This was a movie set. This is what they were doing. That's what bothers me. And I, like you, I do feel a little sorry for her. She was 24 at the time. She's 26 or 27 now. Her career is over. I, I, you know, it just, it's a horrible mess. I don't know if I agree with this verdict, though. On the other hand, David, it's not like, you know, you or I being negligent in our jobs. It's not like, you know, you, you or me being negligent, like me sitting here, I pressed the wrong button and we broadcast out to on the wrong Sirius XM channel. <laughs> she was negligent with bullets, you know, <laughs> and a live round got into a gun and a woman died. This is, you know, so, cause I was asking myself, is it only, um, involuntary manslaughter and a crime because somebody died? And I do think, no, you do have to start back earlier than that. She was handling, she had a higher responsibility than the three of us do when we go to work each day, not to undermine, especially what you guys do, but I'm just saying a life or death really is on the line when you're dealing with bullets every day that are going to go into a, a gun. Right, Megan. And you know that everyone who handles the gun that you load is going to reasonably rely on the fact that these are dummy rounds or blanks, not real live ammunition. You know that they're not going to open the cylinder and check individually each round like you should be doing. Megan, very simple. I don't know if you can see this very well. That's a live round. It's very distinguishable, distinguishable from a dummy round, which has the casing crimped 
where the bullet would otherwise be. Easy to see. She's loading these rounds one by one, looking at them. I'm sure she didn't use a speed loader because that would be exceptionally negligent. That's just when you take them all in one and you basically turn it upside down and load them all together. She did it individually. And that's what made it so negligent and rose to the level of criminality because you can't do that. You can't fail to check each round when you know everybody out there is going to rely on it. Al Baldwin's a knucklehead. He just grabbed the gun and he probably figured, you know what? I'm just going to pretend that, that, that I'm shooting at things and have a good time here. And, um, and, he, and he fired a live round at somebody who I'm sure he aimed at thinking it would have no effect on her because it was a dummy round or a blank round. So she ultimately was the one everybody relied on. She ultimately want, was the one who I think harbors the most criminal negligence. And I think, although, you know, she was convicted, she'll probably end up doing 90 days in jail, uh, get mm. um, probation and probably have a record expunged in a year. So, you oh, know. that's very interesting because uh, she, she could yeah. face up to 18 months in prison. I mean, 90 days yeah. and suspended would be an amazing result. Here, yeah. Here's what's most interesting. So, so her defense, John, was basically the whole set was a mess. You know, I don't trust the guy who gave me the bullets. And it wasn't my, my fault. I kept getting distracted. Uh, the, you know, the people above me didn't maintain order. Uh, they put too much responsibility on me to handle things I shouldn't have been handling. So you can't put this on me. And then there were other people, I mean, forgive me, but in the line of fire, <laughs> there, there were. Like there, the one guy took the stand and testified he was the one. Normally the armorer is the one who's supposed to hand the actor the gun. He or she's supposed to be responsible for the gun from start to finish unless it's in an actor's hands. And she wasn't here. Um, the, this first assistant director, David Halls, was, was the, the last one to handle it and hand it to Alec Baldwin. Um, I'm actually, I don't know if I have time. I want to play his sound bite. I'm going to play it real quickly, and then I'm going to get your reaction to it on the opposite side of the break. Stand by. Here's David Halls in SOT 17. I don't recall her fully rotating the cylinder. Okay. Um, you don't recall her fully rotating it? I do not. Okay. And even though the cylinder wasn't fully rotated, um, did you let that safety check sort of pass. I did. I was negligent in checking the gun properly. Honestly, I did the, the idea that it was a live round of ammunition that went off was just not, it, it, it wasn't computing. Did you speak to Ms. Hutchins when you approached her? I did. What did you say? Are you all right? Did she respond? Yes. She said, I can't feel my legs. Mm. Mm. All right, we got 40 seconds to break, Jonna, but quick thoughts on what that portends for Alec Baldwin. Yeah, this is interesting because the entire de defense was, you know the saying, crap rolls downhill. Her defense is the crap rolled uphill to production and production is Alec Baldwin. And there was a lot of evidence that really had nothing to do with this case that is not going to be good for Alec Baldwin when his time comes. I think he should be nervous. This verdict should make Alec Baldwin nervous. Financial experts thought we were in the clear. They were anticipating around six rate cuts by the Fed this year, and then the inflation data came out higher than expected. This isn't going away anytime soon. How could it? The U.S. is $34 trillion in the hole, and yet we keep just printing money which pushes the prices you pay every day even higher. So you can either bury your head in the sand or you can do something about it. One option to consider is to diversify a portion of your savings into gold with Birch Gold Group. Gold can be your hedge against inflation and Birch Gold makes it easy to own. They will help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax sheltered IRA in gold and you don't pay a penny out of pocket. Text Megan to 989898 and get your free info kit on gold. Then talk to a precious metals specialist about how you can choose to protect your savings from persistent inflation with gold. Just text my name, M-E-G-Y-N, to 989898 right now. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.